In the early 1940s, a Canadian researcher by the name of Dr. Ray Ringer accidentally created snow. Ringer was working with a team of scientists who were studying the effects of rime ice on jet engines when this happy accident happened. Their attempt to reproduce a natural weather occurrence led to the discovery of creating man-made snow. But what followed would change the world as we know it. Rime ice is an opaque or milky white deposit of ice that forms on an aircraft when flying through stratiform clouds. This type of ice typically accumulates on the antennas, pilot heads, leading edges of wings, and so on. In the age of flying machines, man had to learn very quickly how to adapt to the unknown. Icing was one of the many unknowns scientists focused heavily on back in the day, despite the topic having received limited attention from historians. Ray Ringer and his team of scientists wanted to study the effect of rime ice on aircraft engine performance. To do so, they sprayed water into a man-made low-temperature wind tunnel in front of a jet engine intake to create rime ice. But instead of forming a layer of ice as Ringer had anticipated, the cooled water began to freeze mid-air and snow crystals sprayed from the back end. The researchers were not interested in commercializing their findings or making snow. The team published their research about jet engines in scientific journals and continued onwards to their next great discovery. These publications, however, would eventually lead to the invention of the snowmaking machine. Three men invented the very first commercial snowmaking machine, Art Hunt, Wayne Pierce, and Dave Ritchie. Together, the three men partnered to operate a ski manufacturing company based in Connecticut, the Tay Manufacturing Corporation. In 1949, Tay Manufacturing was hit with a dull, snowless winter. Their profits tanked, and the men worried they wouldn't make it to see the next winter. But then, on the morning of March 14, 1950, Wayne Pierce arrived at work with an epiphany. He knew how to make snow. Pierce had an idea for making artificial snow based on the same principle as Ringer's successful snowmaking process. He knew that if you blew drops of water through freezing air, the water would crystallize into a hexagonal shape, mimicking real snowflakes. With this idea in hand, Pierce and his partners began working on a machine that would create snow with a spray paint compressor, a nozzle, and a few feet of garden hose. In December of 1950, Tay Manufacturing applied for a patent but did not receive a patent number until April 27, 1954. Later, an agricultural irrigation company, Larchmont Farms, would buy out the patent for the snowmaking machines. Today, nearly every ski resort owns and utilizes a snowmaking machine. In some places, indoor ski resorts utilize snowmaking machines to ensure that snow lovers can enjoy the sport in the off-season. But how is artificial snow made? How do these machines create snow that is powdery enough to glide across? Artificial snow is formed quite differently from natural snow and has a much different structure. Natural snow starts its life out as simple molecules of water vapor floating high in the atmosphere. When that vapor encounters a nucleator, usually a speck of pollen or dust, it transforms from a gas to a solid. To put it simply, the water vapor freezes and forms a six-sided hexagon-shaped ice crystal. Over time, this crystal will bump into more water vapor molecules, which will attach and freeze. Eventually, this cluster will grow into an ice crystal lattice, a fully formed snowflake. But much like snow machines, naturally occurring snowflakes can be affected by very cold, dry air. Natural snowflakes, when encountering this, won't stick together. This forms POW, as the skiers call it, or powder. Snowflakes that become sticky and great for making snowmen happen when temperatures become warmer and wetter. Artificial snow is considered artificial for a few reasons. Human-made snow is created from droplets of water rather than vapor and forms a different shape. Instead of the beautiful hexagonal shape, artificial snow forms a ball that freezes from the outside in and results in a tiny rounded grain instead of a flake. Once natural and artificial snow is on the ground, the structures of the snow continue to change as they bond and mix. 
it becomes a continuous snowpack and both end up pretty similar in the end. Two main types of snow machines are commercially available, fan guns and snow lances. Both machines use nucleating agents to kickstart the snowmaking process. Nucleating agents are compositions or compounds that induce the formation of polymer crystals by regulating and controlling crystallinity. A snow lance is a long aluminum tube that has both an air and water nozzle at the tip of the tube. As the air and water mix, the compressed air expands and cools. This process creates ice nuclei for the crystallization of water. These machines are far cheaper than fan guns but can be very sensitive to windy conditions. Fan guns, on the other hand, are as the name presents. Instead of a compressor, fan guns use high-powered electrical fans that can blow particles up to 50 meters away. Because the crystallized water is in the air for longer, a process known as hang time, the snowflakes become larger. These machines are known for their snow projection in all weather conditions and are not quite as sensitive as snow lances. Despite their capabilities, both snow machines can face challenges. Changes in temperature and humidity can affect how hard or soft and how small or large the snowflakes become. Modern snowmakers measure the wet bulb temperature, which measures the coldest condition a water droplet can obtain, while also taking into account both the ambient temperature and relative humidity. The colder and drier the conditions are, the more effective the snowmaking process is. Both snowmaking machines will use similar base requirements. All snowmaking must begin with a water supply such as a river or reservoir. Water is pumped up a pipeline using large electric pumps and is distributed through a series of intricate valves and pipes. Most ski resorts will add a nucleating agent to ensure that as much water as possible freezes and turns into snow. Nucleating agents are non-toxic and often biodegradable. The next step in the snowmaking process is to add air. The air is generally cooled and excess moisture is removed before it's sent out. Some snowmaking machines will cool the water before it enters the system as it improves the overall process. From here, the air travels up a separate pipeline following the same exact path as the water pipeline. There are tons of different snowmaking machines, all scaled to fit different environments and areas. All of them follow a similar production process resembling that of snow lances or fan guns, however. While the machine itself may change, the process of blowing cooled air and water through pipes or tubes doesn't change. Although man-made snow may be labeled as artificial or fake, its near-pristine appearance is no less enchanting than that of naturally fallen snow. Nearly all ski resorts worldwide use Snow Machine's aid to ensure their courses and trails are ready for an early season of skiing and snowboarding. If you liked learning about how artificial snow is made, then be sure to like and subscribe for more videos just like this one.